Tell us about the Gatwick deal. I understand it's not yet fully complete and you can't uh, spell out all the plans, but I think most people out there looking in tonight, uh, particularly those who have flown from Gatwick, will say, well, what does it mean for us, the customers? What benefits will we get? Obviously, what we hope to do is to work with the airlines to make sure that we, uh, over a period of time, uh, significantly improve the travel experience at Gatwick. If you look at what we've done at City Airport, uh, in the three years we've owned it, we have taken on-time performance up from 65% to 85%. So it's actually now the most punctual uh, airport in, in London. We've reduced average delays from 16 minutes to 7 minutes. We spent uh, £60 million to expand the gates, to expand the lounge, to create new seating areas, expanded security lines, just to make sure that the experience for the passengers as they go through is a, is a pleasant one. And of course, when you think about our airline uh, our partners, they make money when their planes are up in the air. So if you can have more gates, have more uh, people going through, have the experience more pleasant, obviously they, they do better as well. All I can say is hallelujah to that <laughs> at last. We're starting to hear this good stuff. But uh, BAA is a very experienced airport operator. If it couldn't do it, mm -hmm. why can you? Well, it's one of the couple of things you, you, we learn, you see, what we do with these airports is we try and apply industrial best practices to managing them. Think about what airports are. Most of them are monopolies. They're not used to competition that industrial companies face. And so we have a team of industrial people, you know, who people work for companies like General Electric, who come in and apply all of the processes that you have to apply when you run a factory or you own a manufacturing plant to try and improve the operations of these, of these, air, of these airports. So in your view, was Gatwick an opportunity because prices are low and it was cheap or simply because it had been badly run? Well, we think it's, uh, it's a little bit of both. We think the price we paid was a fair one. And we also think the opportunity to substantially improve the passenger experience, and make Gatwick a truly first-class experience, is, is one that's very attractive. Now, I hasten to add, this will take time. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. We don't even take over the airport till December. But I would say somewhere between 12 and 18 months, uh, passengers should start to see notice the difference in, in Gatwick. Well, I'm one of those passengers. I fly from Gatwick plenty, so Excellent. I shall be keeping an eye on you. So 18 months from now, I should be back. We'll get you back and give you a grilling. <laughs> Excellent. Just on the point of City Airport, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, for those who uh, are unaware, it's based on the east side of London in Docklands. It's mm -hmm. quite a way away from Gatwick. Yeah. Are there any synergies? Can you somehow bring the two together to, to make two and two equal five? No, we're going to run them separately. But, but what we can do is apply some of the lessons we've learned in running City Airport to, obviously, a much bigger operation which is what Gatwick is. Now, in 2007, when you had a big pot of cash, mm -hmm. you did almost no deals. Yes. By your own standards, uh, $100 million a loose change. Yes. You're now back in the market in a big way. Is that because you see a widespread collapse in asset prices? Are businesses now looking genuinely cheap? I think that's, I think that's in fact, the reason. When we looked in 2007, we couldn't justify the prices that people were willing to pay for some of these assets. Uh, our approach has always been very different. We finance them very conservatively. We've made uh, nine investments to date. Only three of them actually involved any acquisition finance, and the highest was 50-50. So prices have come down. We think the, you know, valuations are much more rational. We had a substantial amount of, of capital available to invest. And in fact, this year to date, we've invested uh, you know, well over a billion and a half dollars and expect to continue to do so. Now, your company does business all over the world. We're very keen to know in this country, how are we in Britain really faring? There was a hot debate in Parliament today. One side saying, no, we are terribly placed. Others are saying, no, we are well placed to do it. The government, of course, is trying to pump up its own position. Mm -hmm. uh, you are the son of a Nigerian doctor who was educated here in Britain. You then went to the States. You are a global man. <laughs> how does it feel to you in Britain vis-a-vis rival countries. In the sectors where we invest, which is infrastructure, as you mentioned, in those three sectors, we think one, Britain's a wonderful place to invest. Gatwick will be our fourth investment in the UK, so almost half of the investments we've made have been in the UK. We like the fact that the regulatory framework is stable. We like the fact that the legal system is stable. And of course, they're very attractive assets which you can manage uh, effectively. So we love Britain.